Hello again, I'm Daniel here at New Media and today we're going to be looking at taking your video that we provide and giving it a quick edit. Okay, so I have to apologise up front for the excessive umming and ahhing you have to suffer through for the next 30 minutes, but this video is actually really helpful. You get free software from hipfilm.com, which is your editor. You get all the tips and techniques for actually doing a basic edit on your films, and then what to do at the end when you export the footage. So you can then share it with friends and family, or just put something together for yourselves. Uh, later on, in other videos, we'll be looking at doing DVDs, and uploading to YouTube and Vimeo, another way of sharing your footage but just this one we're focusing on the edits today hopefully this will help and give you some idea of what you need to be looking at if you're just wanting your videos converting to AVI, QuickTime or MP4 you'll be able to take those uh, files and create your own films with them I hope this helps okay to kick things off we need to first get the software and this is from HitFilm it's called HitFilm Express it's actually free to download now and it's a brilliant piece of software it offers a lot more than you'll ever need, uh, but it's uh, available free for Mac and PC, so it's something we can recommend for everybody. Uh, it's definitely worth giving it a try. It's very powerful, and it's free, so why not? So, first thing you need to do is head over to hipfilm.com, or more specifically, hipfilm.com forward slash express. If we go here, that should bring you to a page looking something along these lines as of today. And when we're ready to download, just click Start Making Movies. Now, a little kink uh, to uh, getting this software is uh, they want a little bit of free advertising. So here we are. We've just got to click Get the Hit Film for free at the bottom here. Uh, as you can see, for Mac and Windows 7 Plus and 10.9 Plus, if you're keeping your computer up to date, you should be within that realm. Um, so uh, from here, you just need to pick which one you want to go for. Uh, today I'm just going to go on Google Plus. Okay, when it comes to downloading software, there doesn't seem to be a necessity to uh, share the link for some reason. A um, bit of a weird one that. So you uh, you have the option to create an account, uh, simple as picking a display name, email, password, selecting the uh, format what you're going to be editing videos for. So in this case, we'll be doing family videos and then you'll get the option to send the download link. Um, it'll either email it to you or you'll, it'll take you to the, uh, the page where you can actually click to download the software. If you already have an account, obviously you just click sign in. Pretty much the same thing, except you've not got to uh, create an actual account. So uh, just, do, just fill in whichever applies to you and uh, click the appropriate button and it'll take you to the download. So, there's a bit of jargon here, but uh, to skip straight to it, we're just going to download the software. We're going to download the Mac version because that's what we're on. But, like we said, it should uh, be the same software for both for, uh, both formats. So, uh, whichever way you go, this, this whole video should apply. Okay, so we've got that downloaded now, so we're just going to quickly install the software. Uh, it's basic, uh, normal software install, so we're not going to read through everything. We're just going to skip through to getting this installed. Uh, we're going to say to English and continue. There's the terms and con the uh, license agreement. Sorry, so you can go through that if you like. I'm just going to agree to that. So it's going to use up uh, a chunk of space, 800 megabytes. So it's not uh, not the smallest of programs, but we're just going to go ahead with that anyway. And there we go. It only took a minute to install, so uh, not too bad. Uh, we click close and uh, make a start on this. Okay, so here we are, the software is open, and this should be pretty much the first screen we uh, land on. So we want to uh, activate the software. The Get Free License takes you to the uh, the HitFilm website, where we've just been and downloaded this from. So we're just going to try activating this and unlocking it. And here it just needs us to sign into the, uh, the account that we signed up with originally. Okay, so we've uh, logged into that, and now it wants us to restart the software just to complete the activation. So we're going to go ahead and hit close. And here we are. Now we've restarted the software after activating it, and uh, everything looks ready to go. So we've got a whole bunch of uh, things down the left-hand side here. Uh, these um, 
or things you can purchase from HipFilm additionally. Uh, now this software is has been made for movie makers in mind so there's a lot of support for filmmaking which is completely irrelevant to what we're doing. We just want to edit the uh, the films that we've, been, we've got captured for our cine films or video. So there's a lot on here you can ignore so we're just going to go ahead and start a project and uh, get cracking with some simple editing uh, on our films. So first off we're going to go ahead and hit new. So here it wants us to select our project settings. So this basically means did you go HD or SD, standard or high definition. There might not be options for standard definition, so which is what we're going to start with. So we're going to go ahead and select custom from the drop down. Now in the width and the height, we want to set it to 720 by 576. We change the frame rate to 25. That's what everything is made for in PAL in the UK. And we'll leave the square pixels uh, selected there for the aspect ratio. Now if you do have widescreen footage with your standard definition, you can go ahead and that looks as though it will be the one. So if you just click the DV PAL wide, that should set the width of the video, uh, the video accordingly. But uh, we are just 4x3 as it's referred to in this case, so uh, we'll go ahead with that. The render and everything we can pretty much leave the same. We don't need to play around with these, uh, so uh, we'll just go ahead and start uh, start editing. Alternatively, if we're going with high definition footage, which uh, is more often than not these days, uh, we're going to go ahead in the template and we're going to look for the PAL HD option. So 1080p full HD PAL 25 frames per second. Select that there, and everything should then uh, change accordingly. We're not going to touch the uh, audio or the rendering options, and uh, when we're ready, we can just launch the uh, project ready to go. Okay, now because our uh, video, our sample footage here is uh, high definition, we're going to uh, stick with the HD project settings. And now we're in the project itself, this is pretty much what you're going to see. Um, everything's labelled accordingly. Uh, it does look, it might look a little bit daunting at first, but once we get going, you'll, you'll start to understand where everything is. Now, down in the bottom left here, uh, the timeline just next to it, and then the uh, viewer here. These are your three most important areas. Uh, the, the, obviously, the media. Um, this look window here is just going to have all your files in there. If you've got uh, a whole bunch of files, uh, you might have 10 reels, they'll all be separate files, so they'll all be listed in there. And if you add any audio, or if you do your own commentary, they'll all be listed in here. Uh, to the left, uh, to the right of it, is the timeline, which is where your files will be, where we're going to be editing the footage, and the viewer self explanatory is the, the view of the uh, footage itself. So. Okay, so we're just going to start off by importing some footage. So I'm just going to press this little arrow here, and we're going to click Media. Just going to go ahead and find the uh, file. So here we go. Now it's loaded up in the view. You can see it there. Now this is uh, this is called the Trimmer. This is more like a preview window of the file you've got selected. But if, uh, for example, the first few seconds were no good to you. Uh, you just wanted to move across to a point where you wanted to start uh, editing from. You can set an in point, just click that there, and then we'll go ahead and set the an out point as well, which we'll say there, for example. And when you drag this file onto your timeline now, it will only include the footage in between the in and out points. Uh, the stuff that we sent to you is trimmed at the start and the end anyway, so you shouldn't have any anything really to adjust here but uh, just for uh, reference so we're going to select the whole thing and we're just going to drag and drop this into the, uh, to the timeline Oops. okay set at the start now this line here is your viewing point so if you click hold and drag it along the footage you can, uh, you can see the footage playing in, in the uh, viewer there. Alternatively, spacebar is usually the key you'll press to uh, start playing the film. So if you've done an edit and you want to have a quick uh, watch of it, you can press the spacebar to uh, start and stop. 
things from me back to the start here. And uh, yeah, that's basically getting footage onto the timeline. So the next thing you might want to do is add a title onto the footage at the start of your film. Or if you've got several reels, you might want to title each one. Okay, so what we're going to do next is we're going to add a title to the film. Um, it's a little bit fiddly, so uh, we, but once you know how to do it, it'll be straightforward to do uh, in future. Uh, so, right, the first thing we need to do is actually create a, uh, a whole new uh, composite, it's called, for the text. So we're going to go over, over here to New. I'm going to click that and click on New Composite Shot. So that's going to bring up some more properties. Again, it looks more uh, daunting than it actually is. So we're just going to name this Text 1. Just in case you do add more titles on there, I'll try and organise it the best we can. Next, we just need to make sure the uh, the properties or the settings are the same as what we've made the original project. So uh, it's 1080p, Full HD, 25, etc. Or you can click Match Timeline, which we I can only assume matches it up. And the, here's the duration. Now, it's it's by default it's set to 30 seconds. That's a lot longer than we're going to need, so we're just going to leave it to that, and then it'll give us the option to uh, trim it down to the exact time that we want it to be. So once we've done, just press OK. And here it does, it brings us up with a, uh, a blank window. So here we're just going to click this uh, letter A here, and as you hover over it, it pops up the window there, just to let you know what it is. Um, that's the text, so we'll click that, and then it lets us uh, le hold left click, and we can drag something out there. I'm just going to try and do something central, and it automatically <laughs> changes it anyway. So uh, there's that. So I'm just going to type some text in there to make sure it's working. And there it is. So we're just going to call this title number one. Now, obviously, it's not looking much how we'd like it to look. So I believe down here. In the uh, media box, if we click across here, we've got a window for text. So here, I assume we can change everything here, so we're going to make it a little bit bigger. Just make sure the text is highlighted. Again, just click in there, hold left click and move it across, and then the options should apply. Now, we do want it to be central, so down here in paragraph, there we go, stick it in the middle. Uh, we can change the text. There's nothing really uh, specific we want it to look like, so we'll just pick one. Cambria, you now obviously go through the list and pick the uh, text that appeals to you most. I'm going to make it bold. Next, we're going to change the color of the text slightly. So we're just going to click the big white box here. That's the color that it's automatically set to white. Um, just for the sake of having a play around, I'm just going to uh, make it just like a light purpley blue. And just click off that to make sure it's applied and it has it doesn't look it's not a drastic change uh, just to make sure it did change it we'll just go ahead and make it red or pinky red there we go so there you go that's how you change the color so I'm just going to set that back to white if I can okay there the title number one in fact I'm going to change that to uh, sample cine film Okay, so once we've done, we just need to head back to the editor in here. And now the text that we've just created is in here. We'll call it text one, if you remember. So we just want to left click and drag it. We're just going to put it on the line above uh, the, the film itself. Now, when we've dropped the text onto the timeline, it's also brought in a uh, audio file, which obviously has no audio to it. We can leave it there, it's not causing any harm, but if you, if you want to turn it off, you can click off the uh, little speaker icon there, that makes that silent, or if you want to get rid of it altogether. Now it is attached to the uh, video layer, which is the actual text, so what we need to do is just right click on there, and here we are, unlink, and now it's made it a separate file we can select, and you can just press delete on that. So now we just have a, uh, a text file a text layer, sorry, above our video footage. Now my computer is a little bit laggy, so if it's stuttering a little bit on screen, I do apologise, it's because we're recording the screen. 
yours should hopefully play a little bit smoother. Uh, just to point out under here as well, we've got uh, video tracks one, two, and three. In fact, I should have originally upload uh, put the uh, video file onto the first track, and we'll put the text one down to video two. And you've got uh, audio timelines to match. So if this cine had audio, for instance, it would have uh, dropped onto the uh, matching number audio line. So if we put it onto video one, the audio for that file would have landed on audio one. Again, you can unlink it and delete it if you didn't want it, but it's there for uh, use anyway. So we've now added the text file on here. Now I don't really want it playing over the footage. So what we would normally do, uh, we're just going to move this over here. move it back. Now we want to uh, jump forward around six seconds. I just find that a bit of a sweet spot for reading. In fact we'll do it at seven seconds and then we're going to cut off the end here so we're going to click the uh, slice tool or you can press C on the keyboard and you just click that there. Now the letter V will change your cursor back to the arrow again so you don't uh, cut anything else. And as you can see slightly there, you might not be able to see it, a line has been made and now we can select the, first, uh, the second part that we want to delete and we'll get rid of that. Now if you press the back arrow delete key, it just removes the, uh, the footage but it doesn't move the, the video footage, the cinefilm footage forward to fill the space. So we're just going to click undo which is over here uh, or you can press uh, Control Z or on the Apple it's Command Z. So we're just going to delete this second part of the text, uh, the text layer that we've added. So to do that, I'm going to right click, and we want to do a ripple delete object. Now it does give you the uh, the shortcut for the keyboard. You can try that, but for now I'm just going to use the right click and click this ripple delete object. And now it deletes that piece of uh, the text and moves the video file forward. So it just keeps everything tidy. It saves you having to move everything around, and it does come in handy once you start adding. Uh, more and more footage to the timeline. Okay, so before we continue with uh, doing anything else, we're just going to tidy up this title a little bit. It looks a little bit lost, so we're uh, still in the viewer here. We've we've just moved back to the uh, the text part, and uh, I've got it selected. Now, it's not very central uh, vertically. It's a little bit. Uh, it's floating up a little bit from the uh, from the middle there. So. Because it's, uh, as I mentioned before, it's for filmmakers, you can start doing 3D uh, edit editing in here with this. But if I just click the green arrow for now, I'm just going to left click and hold it and just pull it down a little bit until it looks a little bit more centralized. It hasn't got to be perfect, but you can play with it until you're happy. Another thing we're going to do is just sort out the background because the checkerboard background doesn't look brilliant for what we want. Again, that's a, another filmmaking thing. So if you just go up here to the right to the options. Uh, select the background color, in this case I'm just going to make it black and then go to the options again and untick the checkerboard background and that will just make it, uh, just set the background to black which is uh, which will do nicer for our video. Again you can change it to whatever you like but uh, for this demo it's black. Okay so we've got the title, it's sat in front of the footage so the only thing I want to do now is just fade it uh, in and out. So I'm just going to select that again. We're going to go over here to Effects. Now what we want is uh, called a Dissolve. Uh, rather than try and find it in the folders, we're just going to search for it. So uh, I'm just going to type Dissolve in there. Uh, it's a video transition. Now we'd normally go with a Cross Dissolve, so I'm just going to drop that on there. We'll go back to the start. Press space bar, and there you go, fades in. I'm not sure I added it on the fade out, so we'll just wait. Nope. So we'll go back in there again to effects and put one on the end. There we go. Press play. Fade out. Okay, so the title's fading uh, in and out. I'm just going to do the same on the footage. In fact, we're going to put a little sp bit of a space in between just so there's a nice slow fade. And But to do that from here, it's quite tough. It's uh, We're quite zoomed out. So 
this little uh, line down here will let us uh, zoom in and out of the actual timeline so you can actually see the, the great, uh, transitions on the clip now are showing up as well so what we're going to do I'm just going to move back to the start of here so what we're going to do is just move ahead one second now you can see the numbers counting there, that's the frames so we get to 25 and it changes to 1 so we're just going to move that there and then move this footage across now if you are moving things around a little bit and it starts getting a bit tricky it might be because the elements are set up to snap which is this little magnet icon down here uh, it'll make it so if you try and move something around it'll snap to the next thing so if we try if we just move this around again it'll snap it there the red line comes up now if we switch that off to move around a lot more freely it would do if we weren't uh, lagging as much but um, we'll switch it back on we'll go back to the uh, end of that uh, I'm just going to skip over one second ish not got to be specific you can set it up how you want but this is how we uh, like to set projects up here when we're editing uh, DVDs and Blu-rays so again, I'm going to go to Effects, Resolve already selected, so we're just going to drop that on there. So now when we play, go back to the start, press Space. There we go. Fades in nicely and plays from there. Now of course, you can have the, uh, the text on the footage itself, so what we would do in that instance is move the film back and move in just a second or so move the text across so that the uh, footage plays in and then the title plays in but we're not going to have it sat in the middle of the screen in this instance we'll move it down into the corner there And just for added effect, I'm going to add a drop shadow onto there as well. There you go. So it just sits nicely on the footage. And it just stands out just a touch with the uh, help of the shadow on there. Fades out and then the footage plays as normal. So I'm just going to finish this off now by adding uh, transition at the end as well. So go back to uh, Dissolve. Cross dissolve. Put that on the end there. In fact, I'm just going to zoom in a bit. We'll make this one a little bit longer. And just click on the end, left click and drag. Now it's uh, added an extra second on there. In fact, we may, might even make it just a bit longer again. Oops. There we go. Press play. And a nice, a bit of a longer fade out, just to finish it off nicely. Okay, so we've got the footage on the timeline. We've got a fade in and fade out, making it look nice as it starts and ends. And we've got a title at the beginning of the film. It's all looking good. Uh, so next, I think to finish it off, we're just going to uh, add some music on there. So we're going to go back to the import button. I'm just going to click the button. Oops. It'll pop up our window again. Uh, you just need to navigate to your music. Now, it does use MP3s, WAVs, etc. I think on Mac, it might struggle with the Mac format. Uh, so uh, just make sure you've got your audio uh, exported to a WAV, if in doubt. I'm just going to click Open. And that's now imported. So we're going to drop this onto Audio Track 1, since there's no audio there. There we go. Now, it is a little bit loud, so what we might do is just uh, dial that down a little bit. The line on there should help. Here we go. So it's not as uh, loud. So if you, if you, in case you didn't see, the little line that runs across there, that controls the uh, the decibels, if you like. Maybe um, the loudness, uh, you can turn it up and down to make stuff louder. 
or not quite as loud, which is what we've done here. So that actually starts off really nice. Uh, it plays as the footage fades in. So now I'm just going to jump to the end. I'm going to uh, zoom in again just so we can see what's uh, happening on there. Now I like to let the music overlap the video a little bit, so I'm just going to play out for a second or so. I'm going to select the slice tool or press C. I'm just going to click that there. I'm going to press V to select the arrow tool. Click the second part of the music and delete. Now the same thing again. We want to uh, have the music fading out. So at the minute it just carries on and then stops. So we're going to go back to effects. Now the music. Uh, Music doesn't use a dissolve, so we're going to try a fade, which does come up. So here we've got transitions for audio, and that's a fade. So we're going to just left click and drag that onto the end there. Now I'm going to go to the end of it again just to select and drag that in. And I do tend to drag it out beyond the video. So it start, the music starts to fade before the video does, but it takes longer to fade out. It just seems to uh, play a little bit nice. So we're just going to go forward and play this, see how it looks. And there we go. So that's our uh, our video edited. There's a whole lot more you can do if you wanted to. But for this example, we've added the footage. We've uh, added the fade at the start and the end. We've added a title. We've added music. Now we just need to export that uh, ready to uh, add on to, to create a DVD with it. Okay, one important thing that we have, uh, we do need to uh, make sure that we do throughout the project is to save it, especially if you're making larger projects. So if you've got 20 reels, you don't want to get through it and then your computer crashes. That would be extremely unfortunate. So just to make sure you do save your project, so click the little save icon up here. It pops up the window. Where do you want to save it to? And we're just going to call it uh, Cinefilm and press save. That will save the project so you can close and open it uh, for use uh, later on. But just do make sure you save the project as often as you can because even if the software is extremely reliable, editing video can put a lot of strain on your system so it's very uh, likely to crash at some point. It happens to us, it happens to everybody. So just make sure you save. Okay, now with the edit finished, we want to get it exported so we can share it with friends and family or create our own DVDs and Blu-rays from it. So to do this, first we need to go to the export tab, which is up here at the top. And we have all the uh, options in here ready to go. So what we're going to do in this instance, we're going to pick MP4. So we're going to pick the timeline as the editor. That's the main project, the content area, want the whole content area entire time, oh, sorry, content area. So that means that it uh, will export everything that is content. So if we just go back to the project, sorry, the edit, you see, so the, front, the, the content ends at the end of the music in our instant, in our case. Um, if we didn't have music, it would be at the end of the uh, video. Uh, if we export the entire timeline, it will go beyond what we've edited and just be black at the end forever and ever. So, uh, we're just going to export the content area. We want to make sure the export video and export audio options are ticked. Now it's set up to export in HD, which is what we've uh, edited it as. So uh, now you can downscale the footage if you like. If you wanted to do that, you would need to change it to the uh, standard definition settings again. So I'm going to change it to 720 by 576. Now the aspect ratio of uh, this particular footage, because it was high definition, is widescreen, so 16 by 9. So for downscaling to standard def, we just need to make sure the aspect ratio is set to dvpal wide, and that should automatically change it to fit uh, accordingly. Once that's done, press export. Now because we're exporting the HD file, I'm going to change it back. 1920 by 1080, 25 frames a second, square pixel uh, ratio, and we're going to go ahead and click export. I'm going to select where this needs to go. So, cine film edited, we shall call it, and just click save. 
So it will come up and tell you roughly how long it's going to take. The older and slower the computer, the longer the export's going to take. And if you've got a uh, fairly large timeline, you know, if you've got 20 reels in there, it's going to take a lot longer. So we're just going to leave this. Uh, we're just going to leave this running now, and we'll come back to it when it's done. And that's it. The file's been exported. We've got an MP4 file now of the uh, full edit that we've done. As you can see, it only actually took just under five minutes, so not quite the 15 minutes that first came up. Uh, that's pretty general through uh, exporting video. It sometimes gives you a scary number and then uh, backtracks a little. So if it does say uh, it's going to be a, lot, a fairly long time, likelihood is it'll come down a bit. Now if you are doing a bigger project, what I would advise doing is doing an export overnight. So just set it going before you go to bed. And if it takes five hours, then it takes five hours and it's uh, nothing lost in your day. Um, so as you can see, we've got the uh, option to just close that off, play the file or open the, the uh, folder. Um, so we'll just press OK for now, cause just to quickly glance over these other options here. A lot of people these days will share their videos on YouTube. Now, I would probably advise exporting the video ed edits to uh, MP4 first and then uploading manually. But you do have the options here to add your account, link it all up and uh, export straight to YouTube. So it just cuts out the, uh, the middleman of you setting it all up. Alternatively, while well, we've done it to MP4, quality is great. You can also export it to QuickTime. You can set it all up uncompressed and everything, whack the, uh, the quality straight up. Uh, some people find it easier to work with QuickTime than MP4s. Uh, on Windows, you might also have the option to export to AVI. I'm not 100%. Uh, alternatively, image sequences is going to keep uh, the absolute best quality you can get from it. Uh, so that's one option. And what you'll end up is with thousands and thousands of uh, images, uh, which represent each frame of your film. Uh, so it, that will stack up quite high, take up a lot of, lot of uh, hard drive space. So in general, we just say stick with MP4. It's a really good all-rounder and easy to work with. So we're just going to go and quickly check the, uh, the video that we created. So Cinefilm edited. Open that with quick time. I'm just going to shrink the window down a little bit and make it easier to see. there you go, the title, the music, fades in nicely, fades out, fades all the way through. So that's worked out great. So that's pretty much how to, uh, a quick overview of editing your videos, there's a lot more you can do, but uh, as a starting point, that's pretty much all you need to know. Importing, putting things onto your timeline, cutting things up a little bit, adding titles, music, and uh, transitions to finish it all off uh, before exporting. We'll come up to a. Uh, we'll do another video shortly, just covering how to export that uh, to get that footage onto DVD for uh, making your own copies and obviously giving those to friends and family. And we might also look at how to get your files online so you can watch them on the likes of YouTube and uh, Vimeo, and then uh, share it with friends and family that way. So uh, keep an eye out. Come back, and we'll have more updates soon. I hope this video helped. Hopefully. You can now do all the necessary cuts and changes on your films that uh, you need to do to create that perfect family video. Thanks again for watching, I'm Daniel at New Media and we'll see you in the next one.